Can the New York Knicks win a championship within the next five seasons? Let's get into this. After decades of being a dysfunctional franchise, the New York Knicks have finally, over the past few seasons, put themselves back on track and in the right direction to eventually win an NBA championship, potentially. Quickly, before we start the video, if you guys want to see more NBA content just like this one, hit that subscribe button to see more. The issue with the New York Knicks in the past is they would never really go through their youth movement and draft their own players and develop them properly and give them the appropriate amount of time to really develop. What they would do in the past is they would draft one player and if they weren't good after a season or two, they would completely give up on them and try to sign somebody in free agency that was a lot older and way past his prime, is a household name, and try to win an NBA playoff series or maybe potentially a championship with that. But the issue with that is that's never going to work. You never have continuity. You never have a head coach that's there for more than two years. It's just impossible to win an NBA championship that way. But ever since the New York Knicks brought in Leon Rose as their president, everything changed. The Knicks were actually making good hires. They were hiring good NBA coaches that were going to be there for years to come and not get fired after a year or two. They were doing their due diligence in terms of the draft they were really drafting the right players and they were giving them the proper amount of time they needed to develop and also they understood that they couldn't get an nba free agent to come there right away the top free agent just because it's new york they understand that they have to build through the draft and build through the young players and eventually once they get good enough then an nba free agent a top free agent would want to come to their team but in years past the knicks were always assuming just because the knicks played in new york that a top free agent would just come to their team automatically even though their team was terrible but this regime understood Understands that that's not the case and they really have to build through the draft and start winning themselves before that could eventually happen. And what the New York Knicks were able to do last season, making it all the way up to the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, making the playoffs for the first time in eight seasons, I think it's very clear that Leon Rose has a plan and it's definitely working. The Knicks are finally starting to win and build a great culture in New York. And not only are they starting to win with an older team that they just gave a bunch of money to in free agency that everyone's past their prime, they're doing it with the young players that they actually drafted. Their cornerstone pieces currently are Julius Randall, who they brought in, which is a very young player as well, RJ Barrett, who they drafted, Emmanuel Quickly, which they drafted, Mitchell Robinson, which they drafted, Obi Toppin, which they drafted. Everybody on their team, basically, they drafted and are homegrown players, which is exactly what you want to see. And I think the pinnacle example of this way of just building through your own players and drafting your own players and developing them are definitely the Golden State Warriors. When you look at their team, you talk about Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green. Those are their best three players, and those are three players that they all drafted. They later brought in a guy like Kevin Durant, which is obviously unfair, but either Way. They brought in a guy like Kevin Durant and stars wanted to come there just because their young players were all developed and all became very good players. The Warriors were able to do a very great job just not only drafting good players that they saw, but also developing those young players because obviously if you never developed a guy like Steph Curry, he would never be the player that he is now. Same thing with Klay Thompson, same thing with Draymond Green. Besides Steph, Draymond Green and Klay Thompson were both drafted pretty low in the draft, so finding those players for one thing was a very great, great job and obviously shows you that the Warriors had great great staff involved and they had just great talent evaluation but also they had great talent development as well to get those players to where they are now so that's something I think the New York Knicks should really model themselves after and really look what the Warriors were able to do and try to incorporate that into their own but after a very successful season for the New York Knicks although it didn't end up the way they wanted to losing in the first round to the Atlanta Hawks the Knicks coming into this offseason they didn't necessarily need to bring in a superstar like a lot of people think all the Knicks needed to do was really keep their core together and just bring in pl veteran players that are going to help your younger players improve and I think that's exactly what they've done. When you look at what they brought in this season, they brought back guys like Nerlens Noel, Alec Burks, and Derrick Rose who were all vital parts of their playoff success last season, but also they were able to bring in other guys like Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker, which in my opinion were amazing signings, especially Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker actually just signed with the New York Knicks after getting a buyout with the Oklahoma City Thunder, but the fact that Kemba Walker got a buyout with the Thunder and immediately signed with the Knicks shows you how much he actually wanted to play here, which shows and just as a testament to what the New York Knicks were able to do over the past few seasons and really make the Knicks relevant again and more of a destination again. Back in 2019, Kemba Walker had the same opportunity. The Knicks had enough cap space to sign him. Kemba Walker was even from New York, but he ended up signing with the Boston Celtics, which just shows how 
much the Knicks were really a failure and just weren't a great franchise whatsoever. But now, contrast to that, this season where Kemba Walker immediately wanted to go to the New York Knicks after finalizing a buyout, just shows how things have definitely changed in New York. But I think Kemba Walker was an absolutely amazing move for the New York Knicks. Kemba Walker is definitely at the very least a low-level all-star type player when he's healthy, which is a big key. He does have to be healthy. But when you see the risk the Knicks put in, they only signed him for a two-year $16 million deal, which is $8 million per year, of course, which is an absolute steal. Even if Kemba Walker is injured the whole time, it was definitely worth the risk. And there's basically no risk there when you're only paying a guy $8 million per year when the guy has the caliber of player like Kemba Walker is and could potentially be an all-star, maybe mid-level all-star type player in the league. Kemba Walker, what he provides for the Knicks is just an absolute bucket. We saw in the playoffs last season, Julius Randle just had too much pressure on his shoulders and he didn't really have enough help. Derrick Rose is definitely doing his best. But besides him, nobody else really helped him in the playoffs. But now when you bring in two guys, first like Kemba Walker, who's an all-star type player, but also another guy like Evan Fournay, who's a great ball handler as well, could facilitate and just score. It just takes a ton of pressure off guys like RJ Barrett and Julius Randle in the playoffs especially. So that's why I think this move was an amazing move to get both Kemba Walker and Evan Fournay, but especially Kemba Walker. But now let's get into the title of the video and the moment you've all been waiting for. Can the New York Knicks actually win an NBA championship within the next five seasons in my opinion? So before we answer that question, let's look at the cornerstone pieces currently on the New York Knicks, which is obviously RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. The New York Knicks just re-signed Julius Randle to a four-year deal, locking him up for at the very least four seasons, giving him a $117 million contract. So obviously they're very committed to Julius as well as of course RJ Barrett. So the big question would be, out of those two guys, could any of those guys become a legitimate superstar player in this league for years to come? Not just a low-level superstar player, high-level all-star guy, a legitimate superstar player. But let's first talk about RJ Barrett. So I think RJ Barrett is someone that a lot of Knicks fans have a lot of hope for him to become a superstar one day, and I think he definitely has a potential to be one. When you look at his game, he's obviously very good at getting to the basket. He can dunk over you. He's definitely very sneaky athletic. Not a lot of people know how athletic he actually is, but we've definitely seen him have multiple posterizing dunks in his career, so clearly he's very athletic and can do that. Something that he does need to work on is he's very strong when getting to the basket, and he can finish layups over people, but he definitely needs to work on being a little more creative when he gets to that basket and finish with more creative layups around there, which would help his percentage when getting to the basket a lot, in my opinion. So that's something he needs to work on. And another thing that he's definitely worked on and actually became a very good shooter was his three-point shooting ability. When coming into the NBA, he couldn't shoot whatsoever. But one thing that he completely worked on this previous offseason was his three-point catch-and-shoot shooting. And this previous season, he actually shot close to 40% from three, which is a major improvement and obviously shows the work ethic this guy's willing to put in. Some things that I would really like to see from RJ Barrett going forward that could really take him over the top would be really work on his three-point shooting, continue to work on it in terms of he's already a great catch and shoot three-point shooter at this point but something i would like to see is for him to be able to create his own shot work on those side steps step backs work on his ball handling to really get the defender off him and hit three-point shots that's really the next step for him and then when he gets all the way to the basket i would like to see him be a little more creative and just finish around the basket with more creative layup and just really bring up his percentage when he gets to the basket also another thing i would like to see is him to be a little more efficient with that floater when he comes into the lane sometimes he puts up that floater but he's not very efficient with it so that's something i'd like to see him work on but all those things are kind of smaller things in my opinion and i'm very confident that he will be able to accomplish all those things that i mentioned but besides that if he's able to do all those things at a pretty high level i definitely think he could be a superstar in this league going forward so from the knicks perspective and from rj's perspective i think he has a very bright future going ahead of him so now let's talk about julius randall so obviously this previous season julius randall completely had a breakout season he improved in every aspect of his game and was an all-star for the first time in his career not only was he an all-star he was a most improved player this season and on top of that he was actually an mvp candidate as well he obviously had an amazing season and showed the ability he could potentially be going forward so obviously julius randall's a lot closer to that superstar level than rj barrett is and julius randall definitely played like a superstar this previous season the real question for him would be could he continue to do this for years and years on end and even improve as well i think the answer to that is definitely yes he has the capability of doing that i don't think this is a one-year wonder for julius randall i think he's worked too hard on his game and i think he's continuing to work very hard in his game and i think this is definitely something that's going to last and this is a new player that julius randall is so for julius randall i definitely could see him being that superstar player but he's definitely a guy who definitely needs help and having archie barrett on the team i think helps him out a lot in the long run but in the short run having guys like kemba walker evan fournay on the team as well i think is going to help him out but just in the long run having rj is going to be a very big piece for him and i think the two of them together at the very least i personally think one of them will become a superstar in this league but to answer the question of the video do i think the knicks can actually win an nba championship within the next five seasons i think it's 
obviously dependent on the progression and growth of both Julius Randle and RJ Barrett and if one of them could become a superstar or not but currently at this point I definitely think there is a chance and they're definitely on the right path to win an NBA championship and I can definitely see it happening honestly as crazy as it may sound right now after they were the fourth seed which is great but they got bounced pretty easily in that first round obviously the Knicks are going to have to make some more moves in order to win an NBA championship but I just do think that they are on the path to potentially win one within the next five years but anyways let me know what you guys think in the comments do you think the Knicks can actually win a championship within the next five seasons or do you not think so but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe and hit that post notification bell it really helps me out a lot until the next time peace out guys